G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for yet another video pertaining to this year's trade period slash the draft. Uh, today I am going to be taking a look at specifically the concept of draft picks, both in terms of the history of the draft pick, what they actually exist for, and I guess sort of uh, working out to what extent they've actually worked for the teams that have benefited from them. So I guess you could say this is kind of a follow-up from a previous video I did uh, explaining how the trade and free agency and draft mechanisms work within the AFL. Uh, one concept I kind of left out of that video was the concept of priority picks. So I will both be explaining, you know, what priority picks are, how they came to be, all the rule changes we've seen over a number of years, but also going back and taking a look at previous priority picks and assessing to what extent they actually helped. Before we get into the video, if you could do me a favor and subscribe to the channel if you are getting something out of the content, that would mean a lot. It's been a wonderful period of growth for this channel and uh, naturally this is a big time of the year for the channel as well. So if you could do anything like that to help me grow this channel, I would be very, very grateful. Cheers. Okay, cool. So we'll start off uh, with what the actual priority pick concept exists to do. So uh, it is pretty much plain and simple, an extra draft pick that teams are awarded uh, based on how bad they are. So there used to be objective measures for this. Essentially, it used to be as simple as if you fail to win this amount of games over this period of time, you get this pick. So I've gone through historically and, and looked at the evolution of the rule and um, you know some of the picks. I've got, gone back to about 2000. I thought going past 2000 is kind of irrelevant. I wasn't watching footy before 2000, and uh, you know the draft concept itself has changed a lot since then. But you know around that period, the the rule was essentially if a team had less than 20 premiership points, which equates to five wins throughout an AFL season, or of course if you can you can get four wins and two draws, that still counts as 20 points. Anything less than that, you would get a draft pick at the start of the second. round round or the end of the first round so back then it was pick 17 because obviously there were 16 teams around that time if you did that two years in a row you would get a start of draft uh, priority pick which means you would have pick one in theory We've seen this rule evolve over a number of years um, because of various reasons. The, the rule was getting exploited. We'll go through all that in chronological order and how it happened. But for now, we can take a look at some of the draft picks that were awarded to clubs during that period from about 2000 onward and assess how they actually went. So first of all, 2000 is a good example of this. St Kilda was awarded a start of draft priority pick, which means they had pick one, and because they also finished last, they had pick two. Now, Nick Rewald was taken at pick one in that draft, and that is technically the priority pick. However, it's for the sake of analysis, there's not really any point considering Nick Rewalt to be the priority pick, because if St. Kilda only had one pick, they would have taken Nick Rewalt because they took him first. So Justin Kaczynski was taken with pick two, so in essence, he was actually the extra player that St. Kilda secured because they had a priority pick. Does that make sense? I don't know why I just asked you a question you can't possibly answer. I hope that made sense. So, you know, historically, technically, Nick Rewalt, it would be considered the absolute gun priority pick, but uh, it's probably more real to consider that Justin Kaczynski, who also had a very good career for the Saints, or at least for a very long time, was the benefit that they derived from the priority pick then. So then 2001 is an interesting one because we had three teams that had start of first round selections. And I'll tell you what, this was a good year to have a priority pick at the start of the draft. The three teams were Hawthorne, St. Kilda, and West Coast. And this is uh, widely considered the absolute super draft in terms of the history of the AFL. So the first priority pick uh, was Hawthorne and they selected Luke Hodge. Now, technically, they didn't actually get this priority pick from the AFL. It was traded to them from Fremantle in a deal which involved Luke McFarlane and Trent Crowd. And then I think it was picks 1, 20, and 36. Ironically, 36 ended up being Sam Mitchell and pick 1 was Luke Hodge. So good for you, Fremantle. So Hawthorne get Luke Hodge uh, straight off the bat. St. Kilda took Luke Ball, but in essence, because they had pick 5 as well, Xavier Clark, who they took with a subsequent pick, really is the player that they got as a benefit for this priority pick because they would have taken Luke Ball either way. And thirdly, West Coast similarly had picks three and six in this draft. Chris Judd famously went at pick three in this draft and is technically the priority pick, but because West Coast would have had pick three anyway if priority picks didn't exist, we consider Ashley Sampy at pick six the actual player they got from this priority pick. In 2002, one team was awarded a priority pick and it was subsequently stripped off of them, uh, and that's Carlton because of the, I think it was a salary cap infringement if I'm not mistaken, so technically no uh, priority picks in 2002. Then in 2003, we had another three teams who had picks at the start of the draft. So the Western Bulldogs selected Adam Cooney with pick one, but their real priority pick in essence was Farron Ray. 
Carlton had a priority pick in Andrew Walker. I don't know why they don't have a first pick after that. I don't know if it was stripped off them. It's hard to really tell from Wikipedia. Then there was Melbourne who took Colin Sylvia with their priority pick. But in essence, again, the real play that they got out of this uh, priority pick benefit was Brock McLean. So you start to see a trend here. Another three teams got priority picks at the start of the draft in 2004. They were Richmond, Hawthorne, and again, the Western Bulldogs. Richmond took Brett Deledio with pick one, but really the player that they got was Richard Tambling. Hawthorne took Jared Roughhead with pick two and then ended up with Buddy Franklin at pick five, who famously was taken not only after Roughhead and Deledio, but after Richard Tambling as well. And the Western Bulldogs, after taking Ryan Griffin with their first pick, their real benefit was Tom Williams. I'm not going to lie, I don't even remember who Tom Williams is. Then in 2005, there would be another three teams who ended up with start of draft priority picks. And this actually brought about a rule change, which I'll mention in a minute. But those three teams were Carlton, Collingwood, and Hawthorne. Carlton took Mark Murphy at pick one, but their extra pick got them Josh Kennedy. Collingwood took Dale Thomas at pick two and ended up with Scott Pendlebury as the added benefit. Hawthorne took Xavier Ellis with their first pick, and their extra player they got was Bo Dowler. So some mixed results there for Hawthorne, but gee, in particular, Collingwood did well in this draft. So at this point, the AFL's looking at all these drafts and how there seems to be three extra picks at the top of the draft, and there's some really elite players that I've mentioned in this analysis so far. The AFL's decided it's too easy to get priority picks. They've changed the threshold from 20 points to 16.5, so that's four wins and a draw. So after this, Priority picks were much harder to come by, and there is a slight reduction in how many were awarded. So under these new rules, there were a couple in 2006. Carlton ended up with Sean Grigg after taking Sean Hampson. Essendon ended up with Tom Hislop after taking Leroy Jetta. Nothing really too beneficial from that year, other than the fact that Sean Grigg ended up a very, very good player at Richmond. But that was, of course, after being traded from Carlton. 2007, uh, Carlton took Matthew Cruiser. This was because for the second year in a row, Carlton had won less than four and a half games therefore got a pick at the start of the draft, even though Richmond had actually finished last and should have had pick one, if that makes sense. So even though Richmond were last and Carlton were higher, because Carlton had finished with less than four and a half wins for the second year in a row, they actually pushed ahead of Richmond and had picks one and three. For the record, pick three was then traded for Chris Judd in that big famous trade that I remember oh so well. For the record, Richmond also got a priority pick that year because they won less than four and a half games, but because they'd only done it one year in a row, if that makes sense, uh, they got an end of first round pick and ended up with Alex Rand. So they did pretty damn well out of that anyway. 2008, we saw Melbourne and West Coast both get priority picks. Uh, West Coast took Luke Shuey, but really the extra player they got was Tom Swift two picks later. Melbourne got James Strauss after taking Sam Blees, and that was, uh, I think both of those players had their careers ruined by injury from memory. In 2009, Melbourne had gone two years in a row winning less than four and a half games. So they got a start of the draft priority pick and that was the year they took Tom Scully at pick one and Jack Trengove at pick two. So Jack Trengove really is the player that they get out of this priority pick and of course he had a pretty injury riddle career. Did he end up at three clubs? Was it Melbourne, Richmond and Port? It was certainly Melbourne and Port I'm pretty sure. Then at 2010 was an interesting draft because this was when the AFL started to expand and they heavily compromised both the 2010 and 2011 drafts and uh, just by pure luck West Coast happened to win the wooden spoon that year which was great. In the end we ended up doing pretty well of that draft uh, but the priority pick that we were awarded was an end of first round one and because it was a compromised draft that ended up being pick 26 well thankfully lucky for us that ended up being Jack Darling who is still playing and you know has had a wonderful career now this is where the analysis gets a little bit murkier because um, in 2011 we started to see a little bit more player movement there were three priority picks uh, awarded to Port Adelaide Gold Coast and Brisbane these were all end of first round, if I'm not mistaken. Two of them were traded in pick swaps and one player was traded for. So no one was actually taken in the draft by the original club that had the priority pick. The best thing we can get to an analysis here is that Port Adelaide traded theirs for a player in Brad Ebert, who uh, went with pick 45 for 28 and 49. In the end, West Coast ended up taking that pick and got Fraser McInnes and Elliot Yo went two picks later, geez. Okay, so now we've hit an important point in history where the priority pick became a bit of a source of backlash in the AFL because of there was tanking allegations and essentially when you had an objective criteria for a team to be awarded a priority pick, say four and a half wins, that naturally incentivizes teams who are, have won four games towards the end of the year to not try and win another game. As we saw, ironically, I'm, I'm wearing a Melbourne shirt right now. They're one of the teams that 
that got caught up in all that funny business. So uh, during the 2012 preseason, the AFL essentially removed the concept of automatic priority picks and then essentially priority picks would then only be awarded on a discretionary basis. So essentially the AFL has this secret formula and I'll give you some dot points of roughly how it how it is worked out. But the AFL will uh, keep these factors somewhat quiet so that essentially there can be no incentivization of tanking. So the factors are including uh, premiership points that a club has received over a period of years with greater weight to uh, recent seasons. So one example of this is uh, North Melbourne have been awarded these priority, priority picks recently. That was largely, you know, with the thought in mind that they have had a poor four seasons in a row. By contrast, West Coast finished lower this year, but because they won a premiership five years ago and win the finals three years ago, by this criteria, they haven't you know, suffered long enough to be awarded a priority, a priority pick, so fair enough. They also consider you know, club's percentage over a number of years, on-field competitiveness, which I guess goes into percentage, uh, any finals appearances that a club has made, any premierships they've won, and injury rates as well, which is an interesting one. And that's the first time I've actually seen injury rates associated with a priority pick decision-making process. So I guess what that also means is um, in this example, West Coast has probably copped the worst injury list I've ever seen in the AFL before. That would have worked against them had they bid for a priority pick this year. So because of this big shift in the way priority picks were sort of uh, handed out, we went a number of years without seeing one. I think it was about five years until 2016, the Brisbane Lions received a priority pick at the end of the first round, which was pick 19, because at this point we have 18 clubs. And this was, you know, requested the AFL and the AFL granted it, which was the first time, like I said, since about 2011. Again, hard one to analyze because this pick got traded. Um, you know, as many priority picks are starting to, the ones that we see in the modern day. This pick in particular was traded onto Port Adelaide as part of the Pierce Hanley to Gold Coast deal. And then the Sydney Swans ended up with it by the trade deadline. For the record though, Brisbane did uh, trade this to Port Adelaide and secure Port Adelaide's future first, which would have been the 2017 draft. This was later traded for Charlie Cameron. So in a way, Brisbane did derive a pretty good benefit out of this priority pick. It helped them secure Charlie Cameron. In 2019, this would be the first time in 10 years that a club had been awarded a starter draft pick. And that was when the Gold Coast Suns uh, you know, applied for an assistance package. And amongst other things, they got uh, a start of draft priority pick in addition to already having pick one in the draft. So if you remember correctly, Matty Rao was taken at pick one and Noah Anderson was taken with pick two in that year. So in essence, you know, Gold Coast probably would have taken Matt Rao anyway. Noah Anderson is the player, the benefit that they actually derived from that priority pick. Between 2019 and 2021, Gold Coast had three other priority picks. They were all traded to other clubs. For the record, the clubs that ended up with them took the following players. Devin Robertson uh, went to the Brisbane Lions. They ended up with uh, pick 22 that year, which was originally Gold Coast. Connor Stone as well from GW West got taken, I think, in 2021. And then Matthew Johnson as well in 2021 joined Fremantle. More recently, you know, we saw a, a pretty unique situation with North Melbourne's priority assistance package last year. That was a a really interesting way and a real novel way for the AFL to deal with um, giving priority pick assistance. Instead of giving more draft picks, primarily the biggest concern is probably compromising a ever-increasing draft pool. You can see me elaborate on that in the previous video. So preserving the integrity of the draft a little bit and also being wary of the fact that high draft picks over a long period of time have more or less been proven to not be a real reliable indicator of success. There are a lot of teams that get a lot of access to young talent and they can't work it out. So what the AFL did was they gave North Melbourne and future picks this is last year of course they gave them future picks which are now picks in this year's draft but there was strings attached they had to trade those picks for established players in the end they ended up trading their future second and third which are now at Fremantle for Griffin Logue and Darcy Tucker two mature players to help in the short term now this is nice thinking by the AFL but because North Melbourne had to trade those picks. It actually weakened their stance at the trade table. It didn't give them a lot of flexibility. And if they didn't trade those players, the picks would simply be disintegrated. It worked out well in the end. You know, 20 and 39 for Logan Tucker is not really far off the mark. But you can see instances in the future where if this became a regular sort of precedent to follow, that a lot of deals would be falling by the wayside and clubs would get exploited. So I'm not surprised they didn't back it up this year. And of course, most recently, North Melbourne have been given three draft picks. One at the end of 
of the first round this year and two end of first round uh, picks going into next year. Which, you know, you know, compared to some of the picks in here, um, it is a fairly uh, reasonable assistance package. You know, three top 20 picks is not to be sneezed at. Of course, you can make your own assessment. Is it the same as a start of draft draft pick? Probably not. It's probably not equivalent to, say, Harley Reid this year. But what it does do, as I've elaborated on in a previous video, is give uh, North Melbourne some leverage to be able to trade with the Gold Coast Suns to trade up to pick four. So we'll see what happens there. But anyway, guys, that's me running through the history of the AFL priority pick. Let me know in the comments if there's anything I missed or if there's anything I can clarify for you. It was a pretty interesting exercise to sort of go through and see how much priority picks have actually influenced uh, teams at the bottom of the ladder. You could really see in the early 2000s, those start of draft picks were nailed by clubs. We do seem to be trending away from priority picks. The AFL seems a little bit resistant to want to give them out. But at the same time, the AFL is big on equalization, trying to help out the small teams. And by small teams, I mean the you know the teams that repeatedly struggle and, and struggle to lift themselves out of a hole once they're in one. Anyway, guys, let me know your feedback in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.